back with another video. Thanks for joining us. Manchester United versus Sheriff Preview. We've also got the latest news that Ronaldo's back in training at Manchester United. And also we're going to discuss Simon Jordan and Graeme Souness. They've had a little bit of an outburst together discussing Eric Ten Hag and his handling of the situation all around Ronaldo. So let us know what you think in the comments below. First of all, Tony, what do you want to do? Start with Simon Jordan, Graeme Souness. Let's go, Ronaldo. Let's go, Ronaldo. Well, Ronaldo's back in training today. Give us your thoughts on Ronaldo, Tony. Well, I think the circus is drawing to a close. I actually think it's all resolved. He's back in training. Ten Hag has been constantly in touch with him. And I think he's available on Thursday. He's in the squad. We need a number nine. And I think they'll have sorted it out. Uh, Ronaldo, to me, my opinion, I think he'll now start acting more professional. How more professional than the number one professional can be, I don't know. But I think he'll just knuckle down, get on with it. I think Ten Hag will do the same with him. I think the squad will be in harmony now. Ronaldo knows what he's got to do, training, and hope to start a game. And if he doesn't start, then that's the way it is. I actually believe that Ronaldo might stay until the end of the year. I do, honest to God, because I don't believe we're going to be getting any transfers in. So I think he will stay. Are you 100% sure? that there's harmony amongst this squad with Cristiano Ronaldo and in particular with Eric Ten Hag after what's gone on. Because you know, look to you for influence and, yeah. you know, a, a bit of foresight, Tony, yeah. if that's the word. Yeah. No, I, uh, I'm i optimistic. That's the word. I'm always optimistic, as you know. <laughs> but the thing is, it can't be made any more clearer, the situation and how it's been and how it's got resolved. You're back in, you're in the squad, you could be playing on Thursday, which I do believe he will. And that's the way it is. We need a number nine. Marcel's out. He's in. And I think it's gone. I think he will stay. I honestly, I honestly do. And I think he'll go somewhere else at the end of the season. Do you not think it'd be easy, though? Because his contract runs up at the end of the season, Tony. January is only round the corner, so to speak. Do you not think it'd be just easier to offload him in January? Oh, you offload him. We've got nobody. That's how that's how I look at it. We're not bringing anyone in. I see reports mm. there, people about players. Oh, we're going to replace Ronaldo with this. But listen, Ronaldo's been on the bench. Mm. So what you what you're replacing Ronaldo with? Someone to sit on the bench. Ronaldo's mm. not been starting, but I do believe he will start. He'll start on Thursday. I think he'll f also fly over to Spain the following week, and I think he will stay. No one's replacing Ronaldo. You don't buy anybody to replace someone who's been sitting on the bench. We need a centre-forward. Ronaldo's a centre-forward. Marshall's injured and he'll be playing and I think he'll still be here. I'm not sure if any of you out there have seen the same video uh, from TalkSport yesterday with Simon Jordan and Graham Souness, where Simon Jordan's basically saying Ten Hag's handled it. Yeah. He's basically stupid. Well, now, yeah. what, what is it you make of that, though? Well, I look at it this way, with it all blowing up, the simple thing is Ten Hag kept him. Ronaldo wanted to go. Well, if you kept him, then you put him on the pitch. Ronaldo sees that situation and can't understand it. So I'm looking at it from Ronaldo's point of view. So Simon Jordan has said Ten Hag's stupid. Well, in a way, I can understand it. I don't, I don't like the language stupid, but to promise Ronaldo, you're staying, you're in the team, and then keep him on the bench. It doesn't make sense to Ronaldo, doesn't make sense to me. At the end of the day, it was always going to be a row if he kept him and didn't put him on the pitch. So, in a way, Simon Jordan's calling Ten Hag out. I think it was more the way Graham Souness was trying to, you know, point it out or get his message across and... Maybe Simon Jordan's used a little bit of a soundbite because he knows what yeah. will work and what don't work. And, he, yeah. and he's like, overall, called it called it stupid, the situation. And Ten Hag's been stupid in the way he's handled it. But I think what it is this weekend, it's been a circus all over the place. And uh, Simon Jordan, Souness, everybody else has got involved. It's all been stupid. It was unnecessary. And uh, Simon Jordan, the way he's put it, I do like his comments sometimes, but using the word stupid doesn't sit well with me. The situation really hasn't been comfortable for everyone. Yeah, he has used words on Ten Hag before, hasn't he? He's saying, what is it, a small man in a big suit? I think he's um, he referred like, to him. He doesn't like him. No, I don't know why, though. What? Simon well, Jordan, in it, But then that that's what they do, the, the media. They have to have clickbait, and they've, he's got the clickbait. We're talking about it. No, no. Well, he's got us. Well, as it all. 
No, he's, he's not, not got, got us. No, no, one's he, no. no one's ever got you. Sam no and Jordan, you're getting that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say one more word about uh, Eric Ten Hag. Yeah. We're coming for you, son. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, let's go uh, get away from that, the yeah. clickbait. Yeah. Um, proper got, clickbait. Proper clickbait, yeah. <laughs> uh, Man United versus Sheriff. Well, this is interesting because reports have come out, right, 48 hours before the game. Their manager is quit. Now he's top of the Moldovan League, right? They got beat on Saturday. What a week this is. Has he ever actually been to a, you know, a ground managed a team in a, in a stadium like Manchester United, the fate of the dreams? And, it's well, baffling. mind you, though, was he the manager of, at Real Madrid when they won over there? I don't think he was, was he? I think don't they changed half the team, didn't he, in the manager listen, since then? Th th this manager, right, has quit on the top <laughs> of the league. It's baffling, yeah. but it goes with the territory at the moment. Uh, I... To be honest with you, I can't see a problem coming to this game, Sheriff. What this needs is Ronaldo on the pitch, Sancho benched. He's going to play a strong team because he always does. We're we'll going to win it and then we look forward to going away next week. This is a warm-up game. Really, what you can do is call it a cup final the following week. This is the semi-final knockout. Just get them out, get the goals and get ready for next week because uh, Sheriff really uh, a very, very poor side in the Europa League. How long do you keep playing Sancho for until you, you just turn around and say, look, you've got to get on the bench, son. You've got to give someone else a chance. Thursday. Because... Thursday, he cannot, he cannot play. Yeah. He's, 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 he's just going to do him really no good. Wrong, he needs a break from that first team and he needs to come back. Uh, hey, he, sorry to interrupt, Tony, but are you not really surprised? Have you not surprised that he's took him out of the team a lot sooner? Because if you look at, let's say, Harry Maguire, you know, it only lasted, what, two or three games? I think it's the first two games. And then he replaced him with Rafael Varane and uh, Lisandro Martinez. Malassia as well. Luke Shaw's come back into the team. Looks like he's, you know, made a stake for that uh, left back he, spot. And, it, you know, with Sancho, it's like he's consistently playing him on that left. I, th I think he's been playing him, hoping, hoping that he would, his form would turn round. He's, he gave him a long run. I think it was like nine, ten games on the trot yeah. where he played him, where he'd been part of that first team and he's failed. But he can't put him in on Thursday night. Ronaldo's going in and you would then expect Rashford to go out left. Maybe one or two other people may get a rest, but you never know with Ten Hag. He had four youngsters on the bench uh, weekend. Uh, I'm hoping that he brings one or two of them in. You've got Alanga, Garnacho sat on the bench as yeah. well, haven't you, Tony? Yeah. You know, for me, Alanga, you know, he's definitely got the spirit there. He's got the work rate and the energy, but the the end product's just lacking for me right now. Uh, I think it's something he needs to to work on to be at the top level. But Garnacho, you know, when you have seen him play, Tony, he's got that spark, and it? you know, where even some of the older players would like, you know, buzz, buzz off it, yeah. and you know. Give them a bit of a boost it, on the pitch. It's been very puzzling why he's not brought him on at all. Yeah. All, all the all the reviews about him are just like this kid's on fire, yeah. and why he's not put him on. Uh, I'm baffled. He might put him on on Thursday. I can't see really uh, him not bringing one or two youngsters on at some stage. Don't get, he, don't get to wrong. me, he has to. Yeah, don't get wrong. If you do look back on the fixture list, we have had some important fixtures, especially over the last month or so. You know, especially in the Europa League, having to get back on track there and get some points in the bag. You know, we've played like the likes of Tottenham, Arsenal, etc. But, you know, they look at the, the run of fixtures coming up now. We've got Sheriff, uh, we've got West Ham, Aston Villa, Fulham. Do you, do you not think they're perfect, you know, opportunities to bring someone in like Garnaccio? No. You know, even for like 20 minutes. No, the end. it's not 10 hours way. I think the only opportunity here is Thursday night for him, to be honest with yeah. you. And the problem uh, we've got here uh, is Varane being out. Mm. Luckily, he's not as injured as we all thought. So yeah. that, that's a good thing coming mm. in. So you've got Lindelof to come in. Then we're all going to be crossing our fingers well, this under is... our backsides for Varane in the World Cup. Well, th <laughs> Making we, sure he comes back all right. We've just got to hope that he, he recovers sooner uh, before the World Cup and he gets back in the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so that injury there, Marshall is a worry now. Uh, so really, Ronaldo coming back, like I've said, he'll be on on Thursday. We don't need to pick up any more injuries. That's what I'm worried about Thursday and this weekend's game along uh, with West Ham. Casemiro, give him a rest. Let McTominay, maybe Fred go in there, play Fred a little bit further up. Or To be honest with you, I, I, I look at the team and I think to myself, he needs a rest. We could bring him in here yeah. and whatever. And then Ten Hag just goes and just does everything yeah, totally. against us. Yeah. So but he's like, getting it right though. Do you think he's getting it right? No, you... no. It, it's worked out right. 
Mm. There's no two ways about it. It's worked out right. Uh, Ten Hag just needs to be a bit more forward thinking with his substitutions. He needs to be quicker. He needs to react more. Uh, and I think that's the one thing I've I've been uh, critical of. I look at it and I think you should have been more quicker against Chelsea, especially yeah. with his substitutions. And in this game on Thursday, he has to use all his subs and use them at the right time and not use them late on. You did mention, actually, after we'd done that match reaction against Chelsea, didn't you, With when uh, Potter brought on uh, Kovacevic, is it? Is it Kovacevic? Kovic, whatever. Kovic. Some felt, some, some <laughs> I think player. we both got it wrong there, yeah, but yeah, everyone's yeah. laughing at home, yeah, so yeah. get it in the comments below. Yeah. But, um, yeah, when he made that substitution on 35 minutes, you were saying, weren't you, like, Ten Hag needs to be quicker here to, you know... Well, what it was, it, 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 we all could see... The game changed. Yeah. United were dominant, dominant for 35 minutes. And then suddenly Sterling, through the substitution, Sterling and Aubameyang are in the game. Yeah. And I thought to myself, he has to change it at half time. And he didn't do. Mm. He let the game run while the players were out there, which is very difficult to get your message across. He should have done it at half time because it was clear they were going to be more forceful yeah. and he didn't do it. So he needs to react quicker as far as I'm concerned. No, no, good observation, not to be fair, fair point. Um, anything... Let me know if you think it was a good observation. Yeah, let us know in them comments below, please. Fill them comments. Yeah. Anything else to add on no, that? No, that, that, that's me. That's me done. And I'm just waiting now for some more news, some more injury news mm -hmm. and looking forward to the game. Get it out of the way Thursday and then an introduction of hopefully of some other younger players we can see. Yeah, no, no, good points there today. Um, yeah, going to round that up there. Let us know what you think of today's video. Obviously, that Chelsea player who come on at 35 minutes, what his name is, it's Matteo Cavada. Cava no, no, Cava forget it. Let it go. <laughs> it's my Paul Merson moment. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, well, I forgot it anyway. <laughs> I've not forgot it. I'm trying to say it, but well, it just won't come out. Um, anyway, yeah, smash a like on today's video. Subscribe if you like our content. And we will be back with another video on Wednesday doing a roundup of the latest news. No clickbait this time. No, notification. Notification as well, because, yeah. I yeah. did say notification. All right. I think. It's one of them days. I'll have to rewind it. Yeah, it's one of them days. Thank you for joining us.